Thank you, Nick. If the, vice, if the presidential candidates who wish to address the body will find their way to stage right, I will call them in first come, first serve, honestly. And is there anyone else who's seeking to be recognized at this time? Microphone number three. Point of inquiry, Mr. Chairman. Point of inquiry, go ahead. Is taxation theft? Taxation is theft. <laughs> of information before we hear from those candidates who were placed in nomination and did not win the nomination. I have, I'm going to go microphone four, then microphone two. Microphone four, go ahead. Looking at the video of Eric from North Carolina, looking from the video that we see on the screen, I believe there may be a hole in your sleeve. Could you raise your arms and see if we can get a, uh, uh, a call? Oh, there might be. Is it, is it a website size hole or a 800 number size hole? I believe that's a website size hole. I think there's a website size hole. Does everyone want to check? I wonder if I might have an 800 number size hole under my other arm. Am I good? Thank you. Microphone number two. It's a point of information, a request to know whether this set of delegates in the vice presidential round can be selected not only a vice president, but a VP to be in the instance of a vice president resigning. And I happen to be one who would intend to. No. <laughs> Any other points of information? Microphone four. Thank you, Andrew. I have a request to suspend the rules. For what purpose and for, for what purpose? For a link to be displayed on both screens, please. For what? A link to what site, sir? The site that I requested, sir. I'm going to rule that out of order. <laughs> Seeing, is anyone else rising for a point of information or a point of order or a point of personal privilege? Microphone. Microphone number one, sir. Um, the motion that was just passed. Uh, uh, um, you have to identify yourself. Omar Crow from Florida. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Point of uh, information is how long do each candidate have to speak? Each candidate will have two minutes. Thank you. I assume that they've lined up first come, first serve. I hope they did, because I wasn't paying attention. So I believe the first one near the stairs is Dr. Mark Allen Feldman. <laughs> Somebody they felt comfortable with. Now, 
Gary Johnson was able to get a majority, and I think that that's fantastic. And I want to give you all a round of applause, and I want to tell you how great it's been. And I want to thank the people who gave me the tokens and got me into the debates and every year. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Feldman. Our next candidate, Mr. Austin Peterson. Thank you, Missouri. I'm coming home. Looking forward to some time on the farm with my family, my beautiful little nephew. And uh, my father, who's here today, John B. Peterson. Dad, wherever you are, thank you so much. I got into this race last fall because I thought to myself, if there wasn't going to be somebody who was a fiery champion of liberty, somebody who would, who would get out there and who would be aggressive and, and go after Donald Trump and that horrible state as Hillary Clinton, if they wouldn't do it with more fire or passion than I had, then I would go and I would fight this battle for us. Thank you. And I knew, I knew that my chances were slim the whole time because I knew that I would be going up against someone who is very powerful and who I still greatly respect, Governor Gary Johnson. And congratulations, Governor Gary Johnson. I've fought for the principles that we all share. Parties tend to be secondary to me, even though I have been a libertarian for 10 years because I've always supported those who I believe share the principles that I share. And that is why I decided to stay in the Libertarian Party because I know that an overwhelming majority of the people here are not here for opportunism. If you want opportunism, you go run as a Republican or a Democrat. That's not why we're here. We're here because we believe in the principles of liberty. Yeah. I'm not a perfect messenger, but I think I'm a damn good one. And I like to use good judgment, and I will use good judgment today. I brought a gift for Governor Gary Johnson. This is a replica of our first president's flintlock pistol. And as a symbol of party unity, I wish to say that Governor Gary Johnson, you have my full support, my respect, and my gut. Sometimes I'm a bit of a troublemaker. <laughs> but our enemies are always those who serve the interests of the state, yeah. not individual liberty, which is why I cannot endorse Bill Weld for vice president.
What's great about this is that I get to speak one more time authentically with you. I love this. When I first, when I first joined the Libertarian Party, two things stood out very starkly. One, 75% of your men. Number two, 99.8% of you are white. Shame on you. Shame on you. And then shame on me for never having mentioned it before. But I have the opportunity now to put my support, what little it may be, having seen the results, behind Mr. Derek Grayson, who, who is, is a constitutionalist. And if you think he does not understand what freedom is, then you have no idea what it is like to live in this country in a black skin. I do not know personally what that is, but my wife knows extremely well. And by being with her in situations in this world, in this country, and in others, hearing her story, watching her family, hearing conversations between various people of color, there is less freedom in that skin even today than the skin that most of you occupy. Shame on you. <laughs> Color is not the only quality that Mr. Grayson has. He is a man of honor, a man of intelligence, Thank you, my friend. Thank you, Mr. McAfee. Next up, Mr. Daryl Perry. The Libertarian Party is at a crossroads. One path is clean and clear and goes to the horizon. The other path, not so much. There's potholes, there's trees, there's logs in the road. We have to work to clear the path. That path is the difficult path. The pilgrims who came here 400 years ago had a difficult path. The Western settlers who traveled west on roads that did not exist had a difficult path. We are trying to go down that path if we stay true to liberty, or we can go down the path that looks clear, but in what appears to be the end of the horizon is a cliff. I come today with a warning because I have seen the future, because I have seen the past. In 1996, the Reform Party reached 8%. In 2000, they received a federal welfare check. There are some within this party that want the libertarians to take a federal welfare check. I don't want that to happen because it killed the Reform Party. In, in 2012, the Reform Party had ballot access in three states, just 12 years after getting a federal welfare check. If we nominate two Republican governors as our ticket and we compromise what we believe to take a federal handout, this party will die! I don't want that! Elect an actual libertarian as the vice presidential nominee so that we have an actual libertarian on the ticket in November. Elect Will Coley or Larry Sharp. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Perry. At this point, for the information of the delegates, we would show from the secretary's screen the token numbers for the vice presidential counts. I can read them off as well. 192 for William Weld, 161 for Larry Sharp, 104 for Alicia Dern, 
61 for Will Coley, 46 for Judd Weiss, and 33 for Derek Grayson. All other candidates received less than the 30 required and are not eligible to be placed into nomination. Unless there are any privileged motions, at this time we would move to vice presidential nominating speeches. The order again, in case anyone forgot, is going to be Mr. Weld, Mr. Weiss, Mr. Grayson, Ms. Dern, then Mr. Sharp, and Mr. Coley. So if the speakers in favor of Governor Weld are ready, under our rules, there will be 11 minutes on the clock. And just so everyone's aware, the same rules apply as far as use of AV for these nominations as did for presidential. I want to check, are there any privileged motions before I welcome the speakers in favor of the nomination of Governor Weld to the stage? I hearing none, Governor Weld. decades with regard to the gridlock, with regard to the extra taxes, with regard to the anti-liberty. You know how I feel? I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore. And let me ask you, how do you feel? You know, this phenomenon in so, some ways, Trump has garnered, has harnessed the anger vote. But let me tell you, America, anger is not a strategy. But fortunately, Fortunately, we, in your wisdom, have help on the way. We have Governor Gary Johnson as the Libertarian candidate for President of the United States of America. And my name is Judge Jim Gray, and I can tell you very deeply, I was proud to be your nominee for, for Vice President in 2012, along with Governor Johnson, and I worked hard for you. Yes? There was some talk of my seeking that nomination again, and in fact, uh, I was very enthusiastic and, and anxious to have it happen. But I told Gary from the very outset, if he could find someone that was better suited to get our message out, more assets, more attention, more exposure, go with him or her. Confidentially, it's just kind of between us, I thought I was safe. <laughs> But you know something? He found the man, and it's Governor Bill Weld from Massachusetts. <laughs> Governor Weld has a background, has the ability, and look, I know there are some flaws. There are flaws in me, too. But I can tell you, you show your libertarian by your actions, not your labels. Really important. So yes, he did reduce the size of government and, and lowered taxes and the rest of that, but you may not be aware of this. Back in the 1990s, he stood up and was a champion for the gay, the lesbian community when not only it wasn't popular, it was really controversial. He showed his libertarianism. He is a man with the libertarian values of responsibility. He has prosecuted public corruption, private corruption, unfallibly. This is a man who we will have, and I really request that you support him. Governor Gary Johnson has his support, and Gary, I want to help you while we get on the presidential debates, while we get into Washington, to turn this country yet around back to liberty, and this can happen more than anyone else can. When this if you use your wisdom again and nominate Bill Weld, we as libertarians will have the two strongest candidates in this presidential election. Not only, not only those remaining in it, but who have been in it involved whatsoever. So my fellow Americans, hear my words. This is really not politics. This is above politics. America needs what we will do. America is counting on us.
This is fate. This is destiny. And I nominate for Vice President of the United States as a fellow libertarian, Governor Bill Wells. It's a relief 
not to have to carry the Republican Party's uh, anti-choice, anti-marriage equality, uh, and anti-social freedom positions around on my back, as I've had to do for the last 30 years. This is how we should all feel. Free, free at last! Now, if, if Gary Thompson and I are fortunate enough to be able to run together in the fall, we look forward, uh, this is about the party as a whole, to helping uh, down-ballot candidates uh, for Senate and uh, for U.S. House for statewide and state legislative races, both in campaigning and with funds for ballot access. We've already raised $80,000 for that purpose. Uh, I pledge to you... Yeah. We'll raise another $100,000, and this is openers, not tops, uh, to help uh, Gary, uh, Governor Johnson and me get on the ballot in Pennsylvania, Delaware, and Ohio, so we'll have saturation coverage. I, I would hope also that there would be both down market streaming and up market streaming from the uh, local races in terms of votes. You know, if we all hang together, we'll, we'll do better. And uh, it'll help, I think, to have a strong libertarian ticket at the, at the top. But the more there are running for the local races, obviously, the better for us at the top uh, as well. So as I look around the political landscape nationally, it's not a pretty picture. Oversized government, two calcified, ossified parties locked, uh, locked in a duopoly, kind of a uh, a death spiral embrace uh, where they seem to be obsessed about out slandering each other more than doing the people's business. So Gary, Gary and I are going uh, are gonna to have to take strong positions and stick with them. It's one I've done all my life, uh, both when I was in the Justice Department uh, and as governor. Judge Gray mentioned uh, gay and lesbian uh, issues where I was a, a pioneer. Uh, there are many others as well, but I hope as you get to know me better, you'll understand that, like Gary Johnson, I'm an impact player, and we're going to deliver for you, not as Republican light, but as libertarian heavyweights, okay? Thank you. nomination, Mr. Judd Weiss. Well, guys, this was a learning experience, being in politics. I've never had any political ambition before, and I've uh, been totally aligned with John McAfee this whole campaign, and I said that if John McAfee doesn't win, I'm out, and I'm out. I'm not running for VP anymore, but I would like to uh, endorse somebody else, and I would like to talk about what we're trying to do with this campaign. I, I feel like politics is stale, it's stifling, and it just sucks. It's lame. We need to reimagine something better. So, while most political campaigns you see are using very similar language to each other, the very similar communication styles, our logo was from the year 3000, our videos were from a different galaxy, and I think that they resonated really well with a lot of people. You know, if the way things are is working and they're great, then cool, but if it's stale and it's stifling, then I have zero regard for it. So I've just been trying in every piece of the political process to reimagine something better. I'm not the greatest orator. I'm, not, I'm, a, I'm a newcomer as far as political campaigning and speaking. I've learned a lot of powerful lessons. I learned that it's actually more about whipping votes than it is about winning hearts and minds. I learned so much about the political process, but what was more important to me is that I had a platform for my voice, and my voice was about sales. I feel like the libertarian movement outside of the party and within the party is a bunch of engineers dominating the sales department. <laughs> We are all substance and no sales, and we have very little sales to show for ourselves. My background's in sales, and, and what I want, and, and that's a great thing, that's a, a, the sign of a good engineer is that they can't sleep at night if the numbers don't add up. 
That's a good engineer. We need good engineers. If we're not, if we don't have good engineering, we're like the Republicans. <laughs> Donald Trump, he's all sales with no substance. We bring substance, but we don't have the sales skills. So what I wanted to do was, I want to show that I'm with the radicals in the sense that they're bold. I love that. They want to sell the liberty message. But they're focused on being right. And that high-level nitpicky detail has very little to do with introducing people to these ideas. What I want to do... What I want to do is sell liberty. I want to sell what we're about. Liberty is a powerful product. Republicans and Democrats are already on the market. You can buy them on the store shelves and you can vote for that. You know, if there's uh, two options for spreads of cream cheese or butter, offering a third option of bland or butter is not going to sell. And that's what I think a lot of people are trying to do these days. Thank you guys, thank you. So what, what we need to do is be something different. Strawberry jam, olive toppinate. Try offering somebody, people something else. We, we have a powerful po product. A sign of a bad salesman is somebody who goes back to the engineers and says, we need to dilute this product. It's a powerful product, but we need to make it lame, less interesting, less spicy, and so that more people can uh, be comfortable with it. And, and that, that's just killing the enthusiasm. We, we, we don't want to blend in. Those products already exist. So a lot of the, there's the radicals and there's the moderates, and moderates are focused on sales, and I love that they're focused on sales. I love that. But if they're trying to blend in with others, if they're trying to reduce what we've got, then, then we're, we're sacrificing our product. We're sacrificing what we're about, and we're not selling liberty. Look, liberty is awesome. Liberty is an amazing product, and what we've got, what we're, what we're really pushing here is force is ugly. Force leads to bad consequences at all times. And what we're trying to achieve is a society where we remove force from human interaction as much as possible. And that's beautiful. That's a, a more voluntary society. That's, we're trying to get the most voluntary society we possibly can. Can we sell that to people? Well, how can we make that cool? I, I'm focused on presentation. Those videos that you've seen, our logos, our, our, uh, our slogan, let life live, there's three words. No word more than four letters. I want to keep this very digestible to people. I want to play on live and let live, and I want people to just generally feel this. Uh, the McAfee campaign, I, I, I came on board, and I wanted to turn this whole thing around. And I, it came with a new image, a new direction, a new slogan, new, new logo, new videos. And most importantly, I brought in a really amazing campaign manager, Tiffany Madison, who, by the way, Tiffany Madison is a name you're going to all have to remember because she's going to change politics by bringing that high level, high efficiency startup tech culture into the stale world of politics. So get to know her. She's absolutely amazing. Within just a few short weeks, we were able to build up a massive team with her organizing, and we started this Vote Different initiative that McAfee is going to still stay in, involved in the party to, to promote. And the Vote Different initiative supports talented candidates. It's what we ultimately want. What I was trying to do with this campaign is generate excitement, generate interest, generate activity. And if we could have a bunch of excitement, activity, and support for the down ticket candidates, then we could start having popcorn. We could start seeing these Republicans switching to libertarians. We could start seeing libertarians start getting elected. We can start seeing popcorn popping all over the place. That's what I want to see. And what we need to do is support them. We need excitement, we need attention, and we need tools. And then we can actually be effective. I'm not interested in delusion. I'm not interested in pretending we've got the fantasy of the White House in our pocket. But what I am interested in is moving this liberty protest needle further than it's ever moved before. That's what we wanted to do. Who, who here has seen those videos that we put out? I've never made videos in my life. I, I'll, I, I'll, my influence on the scene, I'm a commercial real estate broker, I'm in sales. My influence on the scene, I got pretty good with the camera, and I just started taking pictures of people, because why not capture the people laying down the foundations of liberty beautifully? These, these are people that are pushing for a more beautiful future for us. Why not capture it with respect and dignity and sophistication and, and, and make these artistic photos of these legends that are laying down a better future? 
So I, I did that with my camera. I wanted to raise the standard of our image and our profile. And with the uh, videos, I, wa I, I, I saw political messaging as a campaign, uh, you know, some, some candidate speaks to the camera, says there are three top issues, and that's just boring. It's, I, people were criticizing me. Where are the policy positions in these videos? Well, I'm not speaking to, to intellectuals. I'm not speaking to libertarians. I'm speaking to the people who are not us. I did not want to put down an engineering spec sheet that nobody else can understand, or very few people really actually care about. <laughs> what I wanted to do was create an experience, craft an experience. The very first video was just very introductory. Are you into that idea of let life live, people enjoying their life? Very introductory. There was one policy position hammered really hard at that end of that video, let life live. That's what we're all about here. The second video, I gave more focus on McAfee. Here's to the crazy ones. Those who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. It was basically, it was basically a cover song of the Here's to the Crazy Ones Steve Jobs ad, or a Think Different ad from, from Apple. And I thought that that was a great sales pitch. The Steve Jobs' words was a great sales pitch for McAfee, and McAfee reading those words is a great sales pitch for the Liberty Movement. But more, more important than that, instead of debating with people and arguing, why are you throwing your vote away to the lesser evil, and don't throw your vote away, and making all these pitches, screw that. I decided to, to talk about those who are doing things differently aren't the runs to be disregarded, aren't the, the weird ones. Those are the heroes, the leaders leading us to a better place. I didn't want to debate. I just wanted to create an experience and glorify moving forward. So maybe you can join the leaders and join the heroes, join us, and do something different than this crap that you're, we're all upset about it. We're all nauseated. Two minutes. There's two minutes left. You've got two minutes left. I've got two and a half minutes left. Yeah, we've got a clock. So, so in any case, then these other videos, the last one you saw, Exit Politics, I went balls to the wall. I pulled no punches with that one, if anybody's seen that. That was as edgy as I possibly could go. I broke as many rules as I possibly could in one campaign ad, and that one blew up big. The Vote Different ad was in uh, Forbes magazine. This one was all over the place, and I really want to get this message across. The political process is not the way forward for humanity technology, and our pursuit of a vision of a better life is the way forward. Yeah. I'm just glad that I left down these four templates outside the bounds of normal political messaging for other people to see that they, they, they can. I'm just, I'm in the woods with a machete, trying to trade it as a new trail. And I hope that other people can see that you can message differently, you can sell liberty, without diluting it and get people excited about it, get people sharing it, get people loving it. That's what I was trying to do. People were proud to share those videos. They blew up. Today, I'm going to endorse another candidate in my place that I'm really, really impressed with is Will Coley. Will is a man after my heart. He's such a great communicator, he's so much fun, he's relatable, he's hardcore as hell, but he's really, really comfortable and enjoyable to be around. I love how he speaks. I'm, I'm glad I got to speak before he got to go up. To, he's gonna go up soon. But another thing is, I said I will only endorse McAfee, I'm only gonna run if McAfee is the, the presidential nominee, but the truth is, if Will was the presidential nominee, I would be happy to run with him as well. He's just such a fun guy, I love, it. I love what he's about. And it would be kind of cool if the, an outright Muslim and an ethnic Jew were on the same ticket. I think that would be a good message. Anyway guys, this has been a fun run. Thank you guys for having me. I hope you've enjoyed what we've done so far. I've been in this movement since the mid-90s. I'm gonna be around for many other decades. I'm not going anywhere. And I hope to see more of you around too. Thank you guys. Guys. Interpreting that as a withdrawal from the nomination, ballot papers will be printed that will not include Mr. Weiss's name. Um, he will not be on the list. I recognize microphone three for a point of order. I just, I'm Sam Sloan from the state of California nowadays. I thought we were here to listen to speeches by candidates for vice president. 
We just had our, uh, 15 minutes of our time wasted by somebody who says at the outset that he's not a candidate. We should not allow anybody to stand up on that stage if he's, if he's not a candidate and if he's just there. And, and, and what, what are you rising for, sir? Is this a motion that is privileged? No. Uh, if it is, I, I do have a question about the man seated on the left. Is on this right? a point of order? Point of personal privilege. Point of personal privilege. Go ahead. Order. Number two, the man at the left is by the name M. Carlin. He is not an official of the Libertarian Party that I know of. He goes from state to state. We don't know where he lives. We don't know what his real name is. We don't know what he's doing on stage. We, we do know that every time there's a Libertarian Party meeting, well, he's always there's a on point stage. Of, the, the, gentleman, the gentleman will refrain from personal attacks and making his point of order. Okay. What is the gentleman's point of order? I want to know succinctly. Who he is. I, I want to know who he is and why he's on the stage. Is the, is the gentleman raising a point of order objecting to Mr. Carling sitting on the stage? Yes, I am objecting. All right, I will ask the sense of the body. All in favor of allowing Mr. Carling to continue to sit on the stage to assist the secretary, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, please say no. No. The ayes have it. Thank you, sir. Uh, you are no longer recognized, sir. If there are no other privileged motions, we will proceed to the next vice presidential candidate, Derek Grayson. deserve a voice. The disadvantaged deserve a voice. Small businesses deserve a voice. Our children and future leaders deserve that voice. They are our future. And the time is now, the time is now to demand it. Derek Grayson not only represents my interests, but the interests of all. And that interest is the Constitution of the United States of America. Without further ado, the Minister of Truth, Derek Grayson. I think you all had enough of the freedom yell yesterday, so I'll dispense with that. <laughs> I want to tell you a brief story, something that took place yesterday down in the ballroom. A reporter came up to me and said, you know, I, I want to ask you a question. And he seemed to be a little lit up, which, you know, I, I don't begrudge anybody their booze nor their doobies. <laughs> and, and, and he said to me, do, do, you know, somebody asked a question yesterday in the convention uh, when you introduced Mr. McAfee, and, and that was that Mr. McAfee has doubled the African American population here at the Libertarian Convention. And, and I said, African American, uh, can you define that for me? He said, well, you know what I mean. No, I don't know what you mean. Well, I, I'm, I'm just trying to be, I said, oh, were you talking to me? I did a Robert De Niro. You talking to me? <laughs> and, and, and he had no answer. I said, look, I am not an African American. I wasn't born in Africa. I've lost nothing in Africa. United States. I am a black man. So you address me as either an American or a black man. He apologized, and rightfully so, because he was wrong. And then I corrected him even more. I said, you know what surprises me about the media? And yes, you are part of the media, because that's how you identified yourself when you walked up with your recorder. You got your facts wrong. McAfee's wife, lovely lady, is black. You have another VP that's black. His wife is black. His son or child is black. 
There are at least five black people here, so at least get your facts straight before you come up and say double. I think that's what, quadrupled or something like that? At any rate, when I walked in the door, I did not see race. I say it on stage, you will not get my vote. And publicly, I voted for Amanda Swaffer. I don't know if she's here or not. I voted for David Pennington. Both libertarians, one for governor, one for U.S. Senate. I hold no allegiance to a libertarian or a Republican, certainly not a Democrat, no party whatsoever. My allegiance is to the Constitution. I am the 100% of the Constitution, 100% of the time God. Now I'm not going to spend any time beating up the VP pick of Mr. Johnson. I respect him, but I'm going to pull no punches on this one. I'm going to do the ugly work. I know what it is to go up against the machine. I know what it is to go up against the establishment. And when you allow other people to choose for you, you have an opportunity today to do something different. And what you need in this country, you need a Trump factor. And when I say a Trump factor, Trump exposed the Republican Party for their corruption. And nobody likes him. They don't want him. But he did something good by exposing the corruption. And the Trump factor is somebody that will call out the corruption. Mr. Johnson's VP, and I researched him before I got up on the stage, supported Kasich, Obama, Mitt Romney, gun grab. I told you I'm 100% of the Constitution, 100% of the time. There are only two things to consider when considering any candidate. If he's never been in office, what did he say he stands for? You consider that carefully and you compare it against the Constitution. And you ask yourself, is that constitutional or not? Because if it's not constitutional, I'm compromising if I vote for him. And, you consider those that have been in office, their voting record. See, I'm one of these kind of guys. You don't run for office, vote against the Constitution, and when you get called on it, then, oh, now I understand what the Constitution meant. See, that's butt backwards for me. You understand the Constitution up front. And when you understand the Constitution up front, you say it in words. You don't worry about what people say because I have never given a single speech where I have pandered to people's votes. If they ask me, well, Mr. Grayson, where do you stand on life? I am pro-life. If you don't like it, that's your cross to bear. <laughs> Mr. Grayson, where do you stand on the Second Amendment? I open up my jacket and I show them my piece that I keep on my side. <laughs> Where do you stand on Obamacare? Repeal and I close my mouth. I don't want to replace it. That's not one of the 18 enumerated powers according to our Constitution. So again, I'm going to say this one more time because maybe you didn't hear me. See, your process is different from that of the Democrats and the Republicans where they pick the VP for you. You people have an opportunity. I said that a second time. You have an opportunity to do something different. You have an opportunity to choose yourselves 
whom you will have to serve you. I'm not on this stage selling myself to be your leader. As a matter of fact, if it wasn't for Van Gutierrez, I would not be here. I would see him in Atlanta, Georgia, on my bed, resting from my last race. But wherever there is a fight for liberty and I can help, I will step up to the line and do my part. But y'all got to do your part. See, I'll go if you send me. But if you don't, then it'll be on you. And like I tell everybody else, you get the government that you deserve. And, and, and we have a battle that is unlike none other to overcome, and that is the media. It is the biggest enemy of this country. And we have politicians that we elect time and time again that go to Washington, D.C., and will talk about the problems, but they name no names. How are you going to take out the trash if you don't know who the trash is? <laughs> so my time will be up in about a minute and a half. But I want you to remember this one thing that I have said two times already. You have an opportunity to do something different. And I know it's cliche it's at this point. But literally, you do have an opportunity because in this party, you can choose your libertarian VP. Not the guy that's the presidential VP. You can choose him. And if you choose him, consider what he stands for. Because I'm going to tell you something. I was able, along with my co-candidate in Georgia, to get 128,000 people to reject the establishment. And I'm telling you right now, if you want to give Republicans a choice as well, because forget about the Democrats, if you want to give them a choice as well, you better pick somebody that is not a wish-wash kind of guy, that is not somebody that will accept or endorse a Mitt Romney or Obama one day that will gun grab for you on another day. That I'm just keeping it real. You better get somebody that will present yourselves as being an inclusive party, caring about those that care about liberty and freedom. And one last thing, put up the flag. It's just a symbol of those that fought for this country. Nothing offensive about the flag. It's a symbol. Team right out. I'm with the Ohio delegation. Uh, I pulled up the ballot media page, and uh, that uh, previous candidate is listed as a Republican. Did he, did he join the Libertarian Party? It is my understanding that the candidate did join the Libertarian can, can Party. Can we get clarification on that? I will ask. I will ask staff to verify Mr. Grayson's membership. If he is a sustaining member at the time that we move to a vote, his name is eligible for nomination. All right. So this gentleman is indicating that he did, in fact, make sure that Mr. Grayson's a sustaining member. Do we have verification? Um, uh, yeah, the, I want to see. I will, see. I will get a point. I will get a point of information from the staff, and I will verify that information before we move to the voting, sir. Does that answer your question? Will we also have a date as to when he joined? I have not been releasing any information about any candidate's membership status, other than the fact that they are a sustaining member and eligible for the nomination, and will not do so. If you would like that information, you will need to ask the candidate himself. I believe he is in the back. Thank you. 
Point of information, microphone number one. Nate Benson, Colorado. I would like to know the same question about Weld. Yeah. I will respond to the gentleman's point of information in the same way. I believe Governor Weld is sitting as a delegate and you can find him and ask him yourself. All right, thank you. Are there any other points of information? There's one thing I want to announce before we bring up the next vice presidential candidate. We all know how to say the website, right? I was pretty sure we had that one down. And we all know how to say the phone number, right? But do we know how to say, how many people in this room have been on social media at all during this convention? Please show your hands. Oh look, it's everyone. How do we say the official hashtag for the 2016 Libertarian Party Presidential Nominating Convention? Not everybody got that one right, so I'm going to tell you it is hashtag legalize freedom. Let's try one more time. I think we can do it better. That's exactly what we're going to do. Microphone one. Personal privilege, I believe. Point of I, personal privilege. I need Judd Weiss to meet me at the hotel desk. We need, we need Mr. Weiss to meet Betty Rose Ryan from the convention committee at the hotel desk. That would be the registration desk. All right, I assume someone will get that message to Mr. Weiss. So without any further delay, the next candidate to be placed in nomination is Ms. Ms. Alicia Dern. Good afternoon. I had a speech written, but I didn't bring it up because words cannot express how much I love this party. This year is a banner year for the Libertarian Party. We have two tyrants being nominated in the other two parties. And the only thing that stands between tyrants and the Constitution is the Libertarian Party. I want to first thank all the people who have supported me and gotten me up on the stage today. I want to thank, oops, thank you. I want to thank Mr. Peterson for his endorsement a few minutes ago. That, Mr. Peterson is, represents the next generation of this party and I think we can be very proud. I want to thank Mr. McAfee who I met with last night and his kind words of encouragement, and his taking the lead on creating technology to help us support our downline candidates because grassroots is what we need to grow this party. I want to thank Governor Johnson for his selfless work in running for president not once but twice to represent this party. As any candidate knows, and many of you have been candidates, running for office is hard work and is a call of selfless civic duty and should not be underestimated as how important it is for this party. I happen to have a personal relationship with Governor Johnson and I can tell you that he's a good man. And I, what we need in the White House is a good man. But more importantly, we need a libertarian. So I want to take this time to call for party unity. I have been somewhat distressed to see the, the fractious nature of the primary season in this party. Because ultimately, at the end of the day, we're all libertarians and that makes us better than every Republican and every Democrat out there. Because of the importance
importance of this election, I ask that every libertarian get to behind our presidential candidate now. I want to tell you a little story. About a week and a half ago, I went to Salt Lake City and I visited with Governor Johnson. He found out for the first time that he was polling at 10% in a Fox News poll. We were getting national media like we've never gotten in 2012 or in any other time. And I have never seen Governor Johnson so fired up. I want to ask him to pledge to us today that he's going to hit the trail for the next five months with that same fire. Because that's what we need. That's what we need. In order to really make a dent. So every year, we fight for ballot access. We fight for debate time. And we get nothing. This is our year to break through, and we need to have activity in, throughout the entire party supporting Governor Johnson to do this. So I ask the delegates in this body to really consider unity and consider the purpose of getting behind our president, a presidential nominee, who will hopefully be the president. <laughs> as you make your decision today. Because ultimately, this is not about any individual person, but this is about this party moving forward. I share with many of you the same concerns about Governor Weld. I am very protective of this party because over the last five years, I have bled yellow. In my work doing ballot access, I have noticed that it is always the Republicans who sue us. So I do not apologize for being protective of this party. And I don't think any of us should. So I want to ask Governor Weld if he is going to be this, not this party's nominee, if he will stand up here and swear to this body that he will not betray us and that he is not a Republican.
betrayal of the Libertarian Party. Yeah, no, I will not do that. seconds and we will have order. Look, I think it's important that we have Gary fired up. And I want him to be excited and have the full resources that he can have behind this party because this is such, liberty is so important. It is more important than any of us here. The Constitution is more important than any of us here. I want you to vote your hearts. I'm going to vote my heart, and I'm not sure even what that is yet. <laughs> but somebody came up to me right after Governor Johnson won, somebody who I respect. And he said to me that we need to have unity in this party, and that I might be the person that can bring it. I don't know if that's true or not. but. I don't know if uh, Governor Weld has allayed any of your fears. Oh. 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 But I ask you to consider, I ask you to consider Governor Johnson's wishes, I ask you to consider your heart, and I ask you to consider your principles. And if you call me to serve, I will stand up and serve. But as I said, the Libertarian Party and liberty means more to me than anything else, and so I want what's best for this party.
that the day itself was erased from my memory. And I mean this in a very odd way. People would ask me, when did your father die? And I couldn't remember. I didn't know. And it wasn't that I was trying to hide it. I could actually look at his, I could look at his grave site and see the date, and then forget a minute later and not remember. It took me about 10 years before I could remember that date. It was March 18th. So I remember after that time, my mother had no family because her family was in Germany. And they kind of just about disowned her for packing up and moving to the States. She came when she was very young, 18, 19. So it was just me and her. My mother couldn't handle it. She really had a trouble when my father died just like I did. And I just wanted to escape. So I had to become an older teen as fast as I could. I ran off to the Marine Corps when I was 17 years old. Happy to just get out of the house and try to be a man. I was searching, I know now, for positive male role models I didn't have in my life. I wasn't going any place. I barely graduated high school. It was not a good spot at all. My mother couldn't handle that at all. She collapsed. My mother started with first prescription drugs and then went to illegal drugs and eventually was arrested, lost everything, and was convicted felon. I came back from the Marine Corps and I helped her. I helped her build back up. I took the money that I had that I'd saved and we got it back up and started. And I saw how hard it was for her to get around that. She paid for that mistake. She paid for that self-medication. So she died. She always had trouble getting a job. She always had people judge her. She always was afraid that somebody was gonna go, ah, you're a felon, you're fired. She didn't, under the system didn't give her a second chance. I had to force a second chance. I began to realize that the system wasn't made for me and her. It wasn't made from a poor kid from the Bronx, an immigrant, felon. It wasn't made for us. So I had to change it. I had to do my own thing. I had to go against the system. So I decided I'm gonna start making money. And I thought the only way I can make money is to sell stuff. But I realized something else. I didn't know how. I had no idea how to build a business. I had no idea how to go on my own. I had no idea. All I had was a desire, but nothing else. And that didn't go well. My first business, my first sales jobs, I hated, but I did, I did good at them. I could sell, I could talk to people. Talking to you now, I can talk to people. But I couldn't, I didn't have that much success. Good enough, but not great. What I found I had better success at was helping others to sell, that I was good at. My mother went off and started her own business. I helped her out, we built that business up. She had to because she couldn't get a job because she was gonna be the family. We set that business up, I left, I started my own business. That was my MBA. I got my college degree when I was in the Marine Corps, but I got my MBA when my first business did okay. I sold that business off after two years. I guess it was a success, maybe. Depends how you, I didn't lose my money. I didn't make any. I went back to selling, married my wife, and then started another business, the one I have now. Now married my wife. This in itself is a good story. I met my wife when I was in high school. I was 17, she was 16. I thought she was the greatest thing in the world. She thought I was some guy. Now, I chased her. I thought she was great, took it well with me. She wouldn't, we were friends, but that was it. I go off to the Marine Corps. She's smart though, so she goes to college. She's a year behind me. But I go off to the Marine Corps, I'm sending her gifts, I'm writing her, I'm wooing her, I'm trying to get her to go out with me, and she wouldn't. She finally sends me a letter. Yes, this is like regular snail mail back then. This is the 80s. She sends me a letter, and the letter is, hey, I'm in love with some guy in college. I thought, all right, that's it, it's over. So I figured it's over. We don't communicate anyway for about 11, 12 years. About 11 years later, we have a mutual friend who sends a, an email, joke to everybody. It's AOL, yes, AOL days, I know, I'm, I'm not 20. So it's, a, it's an AOL, right? It's an AOL joke out, and my email is up. She sends uh, an email to me, hey, is this Larry from high school? And I respond, yes, when are we going out? A week later we go out, we let her marry. So that's how I got my wife. The longest sales process we've ever had. We've been here now 14 years, and we have uh, two daughters, uh, 12 and 6. My business now. My business now took off. Very fast, I learned my lessons, I knew how to do, I knew how to run a business, I knew how to sell, I knew how to, how to do a customer service, I knew how to move a business forward. 
it took off. I was training and coaching and sales and marketing and business growth, small business, life was good. In New York City on Park Avenue, got a nice uh, place on Third Avenue, my own, my own training facility, my own training facility, employees, big banks as customers, and here comes the crash. I was not ready for the crash, and I was devastated. Shut my business down, got rid of my employees, had a reboot. At the same time that happened, when the crash hit, I didn't believe it could be that bad because I'm an optimist. So I thought, how long would this last? A couple of months? It'll be fine, who cares? I'll get past this. Yeah, that wasn't the answer. Year later, I'm devastated. But on top of that, my wife has, my wife's pregnant at the time. We have our, our second child. We have our second child, and my second child, <clears throat> we have our second child, and my second child almost dies. She has open heart surgery at 19 days old. <clears throat> I thought I would lose her. On top of that, this is my business. On top of that, my mother was diagnosed with terminal cancer, lung cancer, after smoking for over 40 years. So all these three things happened at the same time. And somehow I had to still make money, keep my family together, not lose my wife, not lose my business, not lose my daughter. And somehow take care of my older brother, who at the time was six. My wife had moved into the hospital. She literally moved as any mother would with a, a sick child from right to the hospital. All of a sudden I'm on my own. I'm a single dad overnight. Somehow I came back from that to rebuild my business, to reboot, to change what I did, to use my relationships, and to build this back up into a business where now I can actually take off and I can actually be a candidate for VP. I can do that now. I believe in second chances for myself, for my mother, for my daughters, for you, for everyone. We are a nation of second chances. The system was against me at every step of the way. The system was against my mother at every step of the way. For most of us, the system is against us too. You gotta change that. No more. You gotta make it so that everybody has a second chance. And the only party that even has any idea about that is Libertarian. showing you that because I'm going to ask you to trust me, and if I do that, I have to open myself up. I've already, you've already seen me speak, you've seen me debate, most of you have talked to me one-on-one, -on -one, online, on the phone, so I've shown you what I believe and what I stand for. I wanted to show you who I was and why I care. So now let me tell you why you should vote for me. Because I've led people, as a Marine, as a small business owner, and in large international corporations. Because I've consulted with change, change in organizations, government, large organizations and small. Because I have coached and I have trained executives on four continents, the A-type personalities that we need. Because I have taught in the Ivy League, at Yale and Columbia at the management level, at the graduate level. What does that mean? That means I've been successful at training, at supporting, at leading, at communicating for over 30 years. Who better to support Gary Johnson? <laughs> who, better, who better to help him challenge the military industrial complex than a Marine? Yeah. Who better to help, him, to help him challenge the prison industrial complex than someone whose family has been destroyed by it. Who yeah. better to help him challenge the wealth gap than someone who has come back from poverty and from total financial destruction? Yeah. Who better to challenge immigration than a son and husband of immigrants born in an immigrant city, born in a, a city full of immigrants? 
what I would ask you is remember, you know me, you've seen me, you know I'm a true believer. You know that I care, you know that I'm fearless. You know that I will ask for your vote, that I will ask for those funds, that I will push our agenda forward. What I would ask you finally to do is think, who better to make us win coming up here in November? Across 
with respect and just out of passion and love. Now, uh, Gary also spoke about we are trusting him to get the message out and we do need to trust him. But there will be two people to do this. So let's balance this out with someone who will know some of the other aspects of our message that we can really trust both of them. And Gary also spoke about who will get media attention, and unfortunately he spoke about the problems where Judge Gray that one time did not get the media attention. Well, I think Will Coley can do this. He represents an, under, an underrepresented segment of our population. He could reach the Muslim community that has felt disenfranchised by the two major parties, and I think that this would be phenomenal for our party. Ms. Uh, John McAfee spoke about there being a, a, a lack of women and minorities. Well, I believe that Will Coley can also reach some underrepresented areas. So I, I asked you yesterday for Daryl to stick close to principles, and I recited to you our party's statement of principles, and I asked that you all bring that to mind, that you stick close to principles, and for, you know, to run with Governor Johnson, that you would pick somebody who really, really sticks close to principles and keep our party base keep us from our, in, in our roots and where we know where, we're, where we came from. And I'm sorry this wasn't as polished as my other one, but I hope that I spoke from my heart and that you will represent us all in your choices. We, we select our vice presidential nominees separately. I ask that you choose Will Coley or someone that has also dedicated the time to this party and didn't just read our platform two weeks ago. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Hisham al Maligi. I am the chairman of the Staten Island Libertarian Party from the Empire State. And the, thank you and the acting national director of Muslims for Liberty, the first Muslims for Liberty organization in the world. Thank you. I am here to nominate my good friend, brother, and mentor in Liberty, William Coley, to become the next vice president of the United States. Imagine how many stereotypes we would shatter just by having a Muslim respond to Trump or Hillary when they talk about a Muslim country or a Muslim this or a Muslim that. This is a guaranteed coverage every single time the camera is on Trump or Hillary. We have this chance to put a camera on the libertarian every time. I urge you, Think about this, support Will Cooley. To me, after Ron Paul, who brought us both to liberty, he is Mr. Libertarian. Will Cooley. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Steve Sheets. I'm with the Pennsylvania delegation. We here in this room represent the largest group of libertarians to assemble in the history of the party. Give yourselves a round of applause, come on! We're sitting here in a position to create history. We have three candidates for vice president who are all good. We have three candidates for vice president who live and breathe the libertarian philosophy. I proudly endorse Will Coley. Will Coley, I've read his message. I've read his story. It's an amazing story. Will Coley is going to bring this story to the national forefront. Libertarians have always been at the head of the class when it comes to bringing things to the forefront. Gay marriage. We've been talking about gay marriage since 1971. Yes. When did gay marriage happen? Last week? Yeah. Okay, okay. We as libertarians have a real chance right now 
to create history. Let's create history in 2016. Vote for Will Coley. Good evening, National Libertarian Delegation. My name is William Coley. Now, many of you have seen me come up here in debates. You've seen me speak and you've seen me bring fire and as the, the media put it, brimstone, to inspire and electrify audiences here with the Libertarian Party. Now you hear my voice is a little bit strained at this point, but I want to bring to you something true. We are arguing and fighting over 40% of the electorate with Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. But those aren't the real numbers that we should be focusing on. There are 60% of this country that feels unrepresented and unacknowledged. They are sitting at home on their couches. My own mother is one of those people who tells me when politicians speak, I don't believe what they say because you can hear that they don't believe what they say in their voice and their rhetoric. I believe what I say. I believe my beliefs and that is why when I speak, you want to believe like I believe. I want the opportunity to take my voice, to take my passion and touch the lives of that 60% of the American public that's laying on their couches right now. Some of them watching this very debate and looking for someone to inspire them, someone to electrify them, someone to bring them something different, something that they've never heard before. I want to be the one to bring that message. 2016 is an amazing year. It is an awesome opportunity. The protest vote this year is larger than it ever has been in history. One in 10 Americans say, 10%, one in 10 Americans say that they are ready for something new. Someone named Dee's Nuts, who's 14 years old, could pull 10% of the vote because Hillary and Trump were the other option. That means that 10% of the public want a new voice. They want something that they can believe in, something they can feel. We talk about doing things. I talk about action. I don't discuss ideas. I go out and prove them in my daily life. Who better to discuss foreign policy than someone who has shown that the libertarian position on on interventionism is the correct one, that you get further spreading liberty with good ideas and, <clears throat> and good examples than you do by dropping hellfire missiles on children and weddings. I've spent my life in activism and work trying to prove this very simple point. You get further spreading liberty with a pen than with a sword. Please allow me the opportunity to bring that message to the public. <laughs> I know what it's like to live through our immigration system. Oh, okay, I just saw. Okay, all right, well, thank you for your time this afternoon. My name is William Coley, and I ask, in the name of party unity, in the name of keeping our base together, you vote for me on the first, the second, the third, and all the ballots. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Coley. Nominations for the candidacy for the Vice Presidency of the United States are now closed. According to our bylaws, our presidential nominee will now have five minutes to address the delegation. Please put five minutes on the clock and please join me in welcoming Governor Gary Johnson. before you're going to speak for five minutes, that you have five minutes to speak. I was not aware that this opportunity was going to present itself. You know, you've trusted me with the nomination here. 
I'm asking you to give me the tools needed to actually win, to actually take the presidency. And I, know, I know that there are so many of you here that just don't believe that that can happen or will happen, that it's just going to be a, a thing that will repeat itself over and over and over again, that will be out there, but it won't result in victory. But that's not me. That wasn't me in 2012. And I learned from that. I, lear I learned from that in a really big way. And I've said before, it's the way that you deal with setbacks that ultimately determine your success. Beyond, beyond my wildest dreams, Bill Weld is the running mate that I would love for you to choose. We have an opportunity here to actually take and win the presidency, to determine America's destiny for decades. It's a possibility. It is a possibility. And I don't want to say anything negative about any of the other candidates, but please, just look at this objectively. If it's Bill Weld, there is an opportunity to actually take the White House. I don't, I don't know if you know. We're choosing the vice president. I don't want to have to be debating my vice presidential candidate in this election going forward. I don't want to have there to be any disparity. Bill Weld resigned his law firm to what will be a five-month, 24-7, unpaid job going forward. It's, it's an incredible commitment. It's an incredible commitment. And as I've said before, Jim Gray, in 2012, tried to get on the national media. We didn't... We tried desperately to get him on national media. Not one national media hit. Now, things have changed today. But since Bill Weld announced that he was seeking the vice presidential nomination, uh, he's appeared on more national media hits than any declared libertarian in the history of the Libertarian Party. It's just a, it's just a fact. It's just a fact. So, so you trusted me with this nomination. And so many of you in 2012 said, don't give up, man. Don't give up in 2012. Come back. Take the experience and grow on this experience. Beyond my wildest dreams, I have a vice presidential candidate that will actually do this for us. And it's your decision. It's your decision whether or not we want to grow this party, whether we want to reach out to tens of millions of Americans right now that actually want to find out what the Libertarian Party is all about. Please, give, give me Bill Will. Give me Bill Will, and I will give you the best effort that I possibly can going forward. This is the best effort that we as Libertarians can accomplish. Thank you very much. Thank you. rather, of the Credentials Committee, Ms. Emily Salvet. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon. Sit. At 2, oh, excuse me, at 3.46 p.m., we had 898 delegates, 86 alternates, and 900, for a total of 928 votes. Quorum is 372, majority 465, two-thirds 619, seven-eighths is 812. In addition, there are several changes to the list that I would like to recommend. Mike Vaccarino is a Florida alternate. He'll be, he would like to move to the Kentucky delegation as an alternate. And Michael Warren would like to be added to the Indiana delegation as an alternate. Mr. Chairman, on behalf of the Credentials Committee, I move that this revised rule be the voting delegates at this convention. All point of information, microphone one. 
Uh, Mr. Chair, I would like, uh, this is Michael Vogt, uh, Louisiana State Rep for Plaquemines Parish. I would like to ask if it is appropriate at this time uh, for us to get Mr. Bill Rush's um, opinion on a Second Amendment. No, that would be out of order at this time. Thank you. We will move to a vote on this. All in favor of adopting the role as stated by the Credentials Committee, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, please say no. It passes. Uh, is that a microphone number three? Yes, sir. Timothy Perkins, California delegation. Um, I'd like to move that similar to in the second ballot of the presidential voting process that the results simply be displayed on the screen and each state does not go up to orally announce the results. That's a motion for suspension of the rules to, to dispense with having individual state delegation chairs read out their vote totals. All in favor of that say aye. aye. Anyone opposed? Yes. It passes. Microphone four. Nope. Okay. Uh, seeing no further people at microphones, we will now move to a vote on the vice presidential nomination. State delegation chairs, please approach the secretary's assistance desk to my left and retrieve your ballots. Microphone number one. Point of information, Mr. Chair, Mr. Point Goldstein from Indiana. Point of information for Mr. Goldstein from Indiana. Go ahead, please, sir. Can you please read the list of nominees? Um, if the secretary will put it up on a screen that I can see it, I will read it. Actually, wait, I already know them. Never mind. I don't need the secretary for this. The nominees, in order that they spoke and were nominated, are Mr. Bill Weld, Mr. Derek Grayson, Ms. Alicia Dern, Mr. Larry Sharp, and Mr. Will Coley. Mr. Weiss withdrew his nomination after being nominated.